I'm Pasco Sheriff Chris Nalco. I want to present to you some information that happened early this morning about an isolated home invasion robbery that was a targeted incident within the Wesley Chapel area. Uh, make sure the public understands that everybody's accounted for, there is no threat to our communities because of this incident, and that the victim in this case exercises Second Amendment right to protect himself in his home. I want to present to you some of the information. As I said, this is a targeted incident. It is still under investigation. You know, all the information I have is still preliminary, and the state attorney's office will investigate and review it afterwards. County dispatch received the call at approximately 12.43 a.m. What we have of the incident that occurred prior to that is that the victim was at home by himself. He was playing video games. At one point, he hears glass shatter towards the back of his house. At that moment, he grabs his gun, he starts walking down towards this narrow hallway he has. At that point, he sees a suspect. The suspect is wearing a black mask, dark clothing, but pointing a gun towards the end of the hallway, which is at the direction of the victim. The victim fires towards that suspect. That suspect then goes down. Right behind that suspect, as the victim describes, they stacked. They're stacked down this narrow hallway. The second suspect is also wearing a mask. He has a gun pointed down the hallway towards the victim. The victim fires at that suspect. That suspect falls. At some point during the shooting, we know that one of the suspects fired off a round from their guns. The victim then sees he's already shot at two suspects that came down the hallway. They are down the ground. He sees a third suspect. At that point, he fires at the third suspect. That third suspect falls down over one of the bodies that's already down in that narrow hallway, and the gun jams for the victim. The victim then goes to get another gun. As he comes back, he looks, and that third suspect has fled the area. At that point, he gets very shortly after, he gets a call from a neighbor. The neighbor communicates to him that he is holding that third suspect outside the house at gunpoint, to make sure he doesn't flee the area. The Pasco Sheriff's Office then comes to the scene. We secure the scene. The two suspects that were shot first, suspect number one and number two, succumbed to their injuries and died at the scene. The third suspect was taken to the hospital and he will survive. This is some more of the information we have. That third suspect, his name is Jeremiah Trammell, date of birth, 6-30-2001. He is currently going to be charged with two counts of second-degree homicide. The reason why he's being charged with two degrees of second-degree homicide was because of his role in the robbery where two people died. He is accountable for the deaths because it was during the commission of a felony that he was involved in that those two people died. He's also going to be charged with one count of home invasion robbery. He also has a previous arrest for battery and other charges. The other two suspects will not be identified this time until their next of kin is notified. However, let me be very clear, these two individuals have very violent criminal histories, um, extremely violent. So this is not out of the norm of their activities to use violence. As to the victim, we asked the victim, you know, why this may have occurred at his house. And he said he's a gun enthusiast, and on social media he posts numerous pictures of his guns and his enthusiasm for these guns. So that may be a reason why his house was targeted, why he was targeted. It is also during an investigation that we believe there was a relationship, there was some type of um, known entity between the victim and the suspects. So this is not a total random situation. This is an isolated, targeted situation. I'm not going to be revealing the names of the victim because of Marcy's Law, which was overwhelmingly supported by our citizens. And I can believe any citizen in our county, in our state, would not want their name out there when they were sitting peacefully at their house and people came in to do harm to them. Because I can imagine in a client that we live in today, that victim would be targeted further. So we want to make sure that, that victim is protected as the rights granted to him under our Constitution. The other part is this victim exercised their Second Amendment right. Second Amendment allows you to protect yourself by carrying and bearing arms. In his home, he protected himself. And that's something our citizens in Pasco County will do. And I've seen it happen before in the past. And unfortunately, I think it may have to happen in our future. 
as I stated before, this is all preliminary information. It's still under investigation. Our state attorney's office will investigate it. There is no threat to our community because of this isolated incident. All the people involved are accounted for. As I said, this is a, it's a sad situation when there's a loss of life. There's no doubt about it. There's violence that occurred. But for that victim who's sitting inside their house, and anybody who's watching this who imagines they're sitting inside their house and they hear glass break, they don't have many other options. I can't imagine somebody who has children, a parent, a grandparent, who has to protect themselves. It's a sad reality of the world we live in today, but we're fortunate enough that you have the right to protect yourself in your home, and that's something that's very valuable. We will make sure we present to you any more information that we have. I'm talking to you personally because it's important that we've created a partnership between the Sheriff's Office and our community. We're in this together, we're united, and we want to make sure that you have all the information that you need to protect you and your family and to keep you informed what's happening in your community. Thank you very much.